Hey there, it's Board Game Dave. I've got a bit of a good news, bad news situation going on right now. The bad news is that I just tested positive for COVID. Uh, I am fully vaccinated, boosted. I'm staying at home quarantining. I am feeling okay, but it is a bit of a bummer. The good news is that it's 2022. Happy New Year, everybody. That was intense. In 2021, I logged 510 plays of 127 different games, about 70 of which were new to me. Today, we're just gonna take a look at some of my most played games from this past year. Now, when people think about their most played games, they're usually considering their games with the highest number of plays. You could do that too, by the way. If I did, my list would be Dominion, Ink and Gold, Splendor, Hot Pot, a game I'm currently working on, Century Golem Edition, Maracaibo, Ticket to Ride, Seven Wonders Duel, A Feast for Odin, and Azul Summer Pavilion. But I'm proposing a different, and in my opinion, more insightful way of of thinking about our most played games, the games that we've spent the most time playing. In other words, not the times played, but the time played. Of course, I can only do this because I track my playtime for each game using board game stats. So let's take a look at number 10 on my list of games I spent the most time playing this year, Stone Age. Stone Age will probably be the first game that I review in 2022, but for right now, suffice to say that it's a classic worker placement game and my number one recommended family game. If you're just getting into the hobby and you've played any modern board games, you should definitely check out Stone Age. It's been around for a while, but it still feels intuitive and fresh. Number nine is Teotihuacan City of Gods. This is a fairly new acquisition, but I've already fallen in love with this game. Teotihuacan is a fairly heavy Euro game in which you'll be taking your dice and placing them in action spots to gather resources, worship the gods, contribute to the pyramid, build decorations, upgrade your dice, and uh, and try to get some points. It's a brilliant brain burny game, and it also has a great solo mode, which is partially why it's gotten so much playtime. Number eight is Century Golem Edition. Of all the games on today's list, this is the one that I've played with the most people it's so easy to teach and it's so simple and satisfying as you gain crystals, upgrade those crystals, get better cards that make everything more efficient, and then use those crystals to attract friendly golems to your village to gain points. It's a really streamlined and elegant game and definitely one of my favorite family games. Number seven is Ticket to Ride. Not necessarily one of my favorite games, but one that my family really enjoys and I'll never turn it down. This is a really simple game as well. On your turn, you either collect various colored train cards or play sets of the same colored train cards to place trains on the map. You're trying to complete various routes, block your opponents, and have the longest train for bonus points at the end of the game. Number six is Splendor, my family's favorite game. I've talked about this game so much on this channel already, so you probably already know that it's a phenomenal game in which you collect gems to get cards to get points. You can watch my full Splendor review right there. Number five is Great Western Trail, my third favorite game of all time. In this game, you're a rancher in the 19th century herding your cattle all the way to Kansas City to sell them at market. Throughout the course of the game, you'll be hiring cowboys, builders, and engineers, which will let you acquire higher level cattle, build buildings which give you better action spaces, and develop your rail line all the way to New York for maximum profit. After borrowing the game for a while and playing with Hannah and by myself, I finally ended up buying my own copy and it is just a fantastic game. You should check out Great Western Trail by Alexander Pfister. Number four is the Castles of Burgundy. I was surprised that this was so high on my list with only 10 plays, but each of those plays was pretty long, especially since a lot of those plays were with three and four players. The Castles of Burgundy is such a clever game in which you use your dice to either gain tiles or place them out into your province, which can not only score you really big points, but also unlock some really neat combos. Stefan Feld is a brilliant and illustrious designer, and this is one of his lighter games if you're not quite ready for that heavier stuff yet. Third on my list, although it's a game that I've played the most times this year, is Dominion. I'm so happy to be getting Dominion back on the table. It's been around for a while and it's very nostalgic to me, but it's very new to the people I've been teaching it to this year. This year I taught Dominion to my dad, to my sister, I've played it a lot with Hannah, and we really enjoy this game, especially once you start adding some of those expansions. Dominion is the OG deck builder game, and although there are newer, flashier deck builders out there, I think Dominion, with the expansions, is still a fantastic game. Number two, and my all-time favorite game, is A Feast for Odin. This game sees you as a Viking chieftain leading your tribe as you go emigrating, exploring, building, hunting, trapping, whaling, pillaging, and plundering. In fact, there are 61 action spaces on this board. I have never seen a game that gives you so many options. I played this game 11 times this year before I finally bought my own copy, and with with a super simple and clever solo mode, I'm sure I'll get a lot more plays out of this game. And finally, the game that I've spent the most time playing this year by far is Maracaibo, another game by Alexander Pfister. This is my second favorite game of all time, and I've had the whole year to teach this game to friends, to play it with Hannah, and to get some good solo plays in as well. In Maracaibo, you race around the Caribbean Isles, upgrading your ship, hiring new crew, completing quests, exploring the mainland, gaining money, and fighting alongside the English, French, or Spanish. There are so many fun things to do in this 
game and it's pretty open-ended so you can choose your own path to victory. Maracaibo also has a really interesting campaign mode that Hannah and I have been working through and throughout the course of the game, the map will start to change and you'll get brand new objectives to complete. I love Maracaibo. This is such a phenomenal game and I'm so glad it's at the top of my list of the games I spent the most time with in 2021. Please let me know in the comments what your most played games of 2021 were. I would love to know what games you've been getting into recently. By the way, I should tell you that my video next week is going to look a little bit different. I'll be posting my first ever solo play Sunday for charity, something new that I'm trying this year. If that doesn't sound like your cup of tea, no worries. I'll see you in two weeks for a regular video. However, if you're curious at all, or if you just want to support this channel or the charity that I'll be donating to, or if you're an Azul fan, come back next week for that video. And in the meantime, have a wonderful week. Take care, happy gaming, and happy new year. Bye. Happy new year, everybody. What? Happy New Year, everybody.